Man, it is a beautiful morning down here in the Buras area of South Louisiana. I'm with Davey Miles and my good buddy Chris Macaluso. We just pulled out here to California Point looking for bull reds. Davey and the crew at Cajun Fishing Adventures have been killing the bull reds in this area. It's been very, very good lately. I don't know if we're gonna stick with this long. If we find them, we definitely will. Probably gonna run into the marsh and find some smaller reds as well. But this is a good way to start a great day here in South Louisiana. Oh, sure did. May have been a whisker trout. It's always best to throw your cork directly into the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it more fun. Come on, redfish. Bite C Mac. Oh. What you got? Redfish? Red Come on, C Mac. First cast on the Z Man. <laughs> you know oh, you kidding me? <laughs> C Mac! God dang it! Are you kidding? Check that hook, man. Are you using a Z Man hook? No, I'm using a damn death grip. <laughs> it ain't the hook, then. This hook is razor sharp. I'm sticking it halfway into my finger. C-Mac! Try not to lose this one, C-Mac. It's, 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 it's looking bleak. It's looking like you're going to lose this one. Is he digging? He's action, buddy. Well, he ain't the fish like he, he ain't the same fish I, I, I had the hook before. Good job, C-Mac. I'm glad you finally got one in. Thanks. <laughs> Man, come on. Bigger speckle trout. Bigger? Oh, you might go 13. Do some of that talking stuff, Todd. <laughs> Notice I didn't talk as much on that one. <laughs> I gotta change something. I'm getting, I'm getting no hits. How deep you see, Mag, about that? About yay? Maybe a little shallower than that. Maybe, uh, maybe shorten it up by a couple inches here. I mean, I, I, this is what it was tied up yesterday fishing a pond. So I gotcha. If I said who? You got a red? Well, C-Mac is whacking him. Yeah. I shortened up. I'm going to make a cast, see if that matters. If not, I yeah. have to change the baits. There's a fish. Speckled trout, nice one. Just had to shorten up the leader. That was the key. That was the key. Versamax Bolt Pro Series. With the adjustable, I got it. Yeah, I'll just, I'm not used to having customers that can flip them in. How Look how deep he took it. Right. There's a fish. Right. Speckle trout. Speckle trout. TKO, baby. I think he's a keeper. He's a little small, but I think he's 12. C Mac! What you got, C Mac? A little slick, yeah, is that what you pointed at? Yeah. Yeah. A little slick. 
Well, I guess that was deeper. Yeah. Tenderizing? Um, and something's just busting that mullet. I don't know if it's just freaking itself out or... Oh, see Mac? <laughs> that was unintentional. See Mac's got another one. I'm starting to get my feelings hurt. Right on that little, right on the edge of that yeah, slick. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Right, it was the other day. It wasn't every cast, but we boxed it. Ooh, there you go. That. Keep a keep up! Well, it's something. Speckle trout, baby. That one ripped the rod out of my hands. All right, keep it trout. All right, so David, we've kind of gotten on the bite here, really close to this this current line. That's probably not an accident, right? Correct. Yeah, we got an incoming tide, which is kind of holding the bait. Coming off this point here, we got a little little ledge, and it's just enough where that water's kind of coming around it and holding some bait here. Kind of got the trout right on the right on the current line. I mean, is that something? You know, obviously there's current lines everywhere. You can't just run around and look for current lines because you stop and fish everything. But right. when you key in kind of in an area that is productive you look for those current lines that, that's, right that's right okay yeah, and we're looking right off right right off adjacent to the point and a lot of times the bait will give it away the mullet you know um and for those who don't know what is a current line well current lines what well, two water uh, change you, you, you have different uh, movements of water coming together is what it is so what it can be is you can be falling out of this bay here when it's kind of like a little eddy behind the point and it kind of just forms a little little slick here and it, what it does, it holds the bait to opposing moving water. Okay. All right, and you know, this is kind of the, the trifecta, right? I mean, what you look for as a guide, we've got clean water, it's moving, yep. and we got bait. That's correct. Right? That's Doesn't correct. mean you're guaranteed to catch them. That, but that's, that's what we, that is, that's what we target to kind of give us the best opportunity to catch fish, absolutely. It puts the odds in your favor. That's right, right. that's right. We're always fighting something, whether it's water clarity, <laughs> moving water, right. moon phases, high pressure, low pressure. Right. But, uh, but absolutely, if you can put together the three main variables, which is the moving water, the clean water, and the bait, the odds are in favor of getting bit, you know, so. And you know, the action is so good here that even C-Mac is whacking them. That's right. So. <laughs> Got him on him. Like, I mean, that's, that's just incredible. That's and truly incredible. All right. <laughs> And he does it again. <laughs> oh, it might be your first throwback, C Mac. I don't think he's going to make it. Big trout are fun to catch, but the little trout are fun to eat. That's right. I fry a ton of fish and always watch people. You know, I'll take I'll take my fish last and let everybody and everybody looks at the at the tray to see the small ones. Right, right. And pull all the small ones out. That's what they want to eat. All right, so right now we are fishing kind of north of California Point, very, very well-known area here in South Louisiana. There's a bayou that cuts into the river called Bayou Tortillion that throughout the past several months has just been dumping fresh river water into this area. Of course, the river's falling now. It's retreating, really dropping like a stone very, very quickly. And that green water's starting to move back in from the Gulf. And these fish are coming in to take advantage of all this bait and nutrients left behind by the Mississippi River. The fishing has just been fantastic here. We're catching just a great number of speckled trout. And look, I mean, the speckled trout fishing hasn't been that great the past few months simply because it's been so far out. Those fish have had to kind of escape to go spawn, escape all that fresh water. But the great thing is, is once that water starts retreating, we get into the fall of the year. The fish don't need the salinity anymore. What they need then is bait. And man, there's just tons of it in this area, really throughout Southeast Louisiana. Let me tell you, it is just gonna be a phenomenal, phenomenal fall. I don't know if you can see this on camera. I'm gonna show you how close we are to the Mississippi River. It's just right over the horizon there. If you see that tree line, that's the Mississippi River. Davey, how close are we, would you say, as a crow flies? From here, we're about three and a half miles out from the river. Three and a half miles. That's it. <laughs> fish on, fish on. Get him C. Macaluso. That's a keeper. That's a good trout. That's a good trout. C. Mac catches those little ones. <laughs> Nine o'clock. It looks like our tide is beginning to wane. You notice that? It is. You don't see the dominant line. Anymore. Right. Yeah. Seems like every day, right around this time, is when the the tide's been dying. Hey, come on, Todd. <laughs> Not even. I'm watching C Max cork. <laughs> so, all you gotta do is look at your cork, see, and he catches one. Yeah. <laughs> 
My folks got that good juju. Uh, there you go. Fry daddy. Man, I love this. I need to bring Davey on every trip. <laughs> Here you go, Davey. Yeah, I do, right? <laughs> Well, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see what he is. He's a trout. He's a trout. So let me show you what I was fishing with today. This is the Versamax Pro Series. It's a bigger cork than the traditional Versamax bolt. It's a lot louder as well. And I'll tell you what, this cork is the reason I caught so many fish today. And let me tell you why. C-Mac was whacking the fish and I was getting nothing, no bites or anything. Took a look at his leader and it was a lot shorter. And of course, the great thing with all Versamax corks is you can adjust the leader length like that in no time. So I shortened my leader and immediately, right away, started catching fish. And below this, I've got an H&H &H TKO shrimp. This thing, it's got no bells and whistles, but I can tell you it just catches fish. Really, really like this bait. Whenever fish are feeding on shrimp, this is my go-to, and it definitely produced today. What you got right there, bruh? What you throwing? Uh, oh, a core? Savage. Nice little trout. Nice. Oh, oh C-Mac. That's the one you'll think about tonight in bed. All right, so we're in that Bayou Tortillion that I mentioned earlier. I ran this last year at this time for an event called Marsh Madness. I'll link to those videos here if you haven't seen them. But the difference in this area, the change in the land that has cropped up due to this high Mississippi River that we had all year is absolutely astounding. When people tell you diversions don't build land, it's a lie. Come down here and take a look. Your mind will be blown. My good buddy C-Mac has been fishing down here for how long, C-Mac? Uh, about 20 years or more. About 20 years or more, and the changes he's seen are incredible. We're going to talk about those real quick. All right, C-Mac, you said you've been fishing out here like 20 years. Obviously, this area has changed a tremendous amount, probably no time more than the past year. What are we looking at right here? Well, we're looking at a bunch of new land, and it doesn't look like dry land, but it, it's land. And that's really how all of South Louisiana started anyway. At some point, you got to get a mud deposit, and then the vegetation grows on it, and it slows the sediment down. But, you know, over my right shoulder here, there's probably another three-quarters of a mile of land up to where the land used to end five or six years ago and then out out here there's probably another mile or so or more of land that goes out here in the quarantine bay and then on the south side there's land that's cropping up all over here and it goes even farther out into quarantine bay and so i know a lot of folks who are used to running through quarantine bay you can't just come out here and run around anymore because there's so much new sandbar and new land uh, that you'll get stuck. You really got to stay in the channel. It's incredible the amount of land that's been built here and then built in places like Bay Denise and other areas around here. It just wasn't here five or six years ago. Uh, and it's all from sediment deposits from the river. And we're getting to the point where the river's falling out a lot and, and this water in here will start getting green and the vegetation will start cropping up even more. You come back here in, in September, that will teal all over this. Come back here in November, it'll be covered up in ducks. So is this kind of what you expect when we eventually get these sediment diversions built on either side of the river? Is this what's gonna happen in those areas? This is, this is a, a, a sort of a, a good laboratory uh, to look and see how the river builds land. You know, there are ways to, to expedite that construction by putting little terraces and humps out there to help capture the sediment better. But yeah, I mean, you, we've seen this, this land emerge, you know, in the last decade. And, and I think that's a good time frame to look at. It doesn't take very long when the conditions are right for the river to build land. You know, and a lot of people will come to areas that previously they could fish and now they can't because they're silted in. And it's understandable those people might be a little frustrated, but what do you have to say to them? Well, you have to find other places to fish. I mean, that's just kind of the way this place has always changed. There are places where uh, you try to fish now that you can't fish anymore because they don't exist. I think it's a pretty good problem to have to have an area, you know, since we've lost so much land, to have areas now that's building land, and then you got to figure out where the fish are. The fish move around. It's a dynamic system. It's supposed to be that way. But, you know, this gives you hope, man. I mean, we've lost so much land here in South Louisiana. 2,000 square miles in the last 80, 90 years, and then you come out here and you see literally miles of land being built by the Mississippi River. It won't be long before this bay is filled in. And even if we do get a hurricane come in here and move this sediment around, it'll resettle in other places. And because it's connected to the river, that land will start growing again, just like we see at Wax Lake, just like we see downriver at West Delta. I mean, this is very, very, this gives you a lot of hope. I mean, 
We've got mudflats and emergent vegetation here going out miles away from the Mississippi River now in areas that, that less than five years ago was open water. I tell you, this is all very, very heartening to see. I'm so excited to see this land popping up in this area. And you know, this is just one little microcosm of what's going on across the entire coast thanks to this high Mississippi River. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video and got a lot out of it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in this emerging marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.